Hi, welcome to a cloudy, wet day in Chesterfield. And uh, before I get started on the video, I'd just like to thank everybody that has subscribed and uh, everybody that's watched the videos and passed the comments. Thank you very much for subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and check out some more videos. What we're going to look at today is we're going to move away from the main pond behind me and we're going to look at the grow on vat the uh, koi fry grow on vat as i call it and we're going to focus on the koi from cutterbrook koi that i purchased in may or sorry what was hatched in may and was purchased in july at the time of filming they're 16 weeks old but i've had a bit of a delay processing the video and uh, uh, one thing and another with the weather etc but the video there for, for the sake of a few days they're 16 weeks old but we're going to have a look at the what we've got, uh, where they are, and what they look like. Stay tuned to the end because there's some extra clips and some footage of the koi from the mass spawning from out of the pond itself. I've not really done any videos on that. I did a couple originally, but I lost uh, the footage. The software didn't work, and one, one or two technical errors. But I've done a bit of uh, filming of those at the moment so you can see what they're like and how they compare to the ones from Cuttlebrook. Again, the, my own koi from my mass spawning and uh, it's something that I've just let happen rather than uh, uh, force it or add any extra food or anything like that. It's just something that's happened so I'm not too uh, sure who the parents are but they're still growing, they're still in the uh, uh, in the fry vat and they're doing well. So we'll have a quick look at those at the end. That's the uh, vat, koi fry vat that I'm growing the cutterbrook koi on, it's the outdoor one. I do put a polycarbonate sheet on the top to keep it warm through the night but with a massive drop in temperature the uh, water has been dropping from 25 degrees down to 18 degrees. So what I did is actually use the thermal insulation board in Kingspan from last year, cut it down one side and fitted it around the backy which I'll, there's a clip of it later so I'll show you that bit but uh, apart from that the feeder is the only thing that uh, is different. Let's take a look because they're uh, swimming around us. Let me know which is your favourite. Let me know if you can see any specific types or anything that grabs your eye. Take a closer look under the water and see them in their own natural environment and you'll see how, not feisty, but how eager to feed they are. You can also appreciate the markings and the, uh, the sizes of them. They're all averaging between 4 and 5 inch. There's a couple that may be touching 6 inch and uh, I think there's the odd one or two that is only small 4 inch. But the markings, they're amazing. I'm really pleased with them this year.
that's a close up of them in the growing on bat but what we'll do is bowl them up and have a look at um, a bit closer and see what we can see this is the first ten that I've pulled out that have got uh, cracking markings or uh, distinctive markings should I say this one here is a black on its back that is actually from my pond the mass spawning in, in my pond it's one of the four that I've put in here but this black one with the orange head and the white back is really uh, distinctive that is Two. And again, it's just a random ten that I've pulled out the net. And the one that really stands out is the orange and black one there. So I don't know if we've got a bit of a shower there and a bit of a thank you. And of course, the, the second one, or oh, the third one that stands out even more with a big bright shoulder and head, is that one at the top corner there. sizes are between five and six inch and this one here really is colourful orange and black one just to the side of it and underneath down there is the one with the twisted snout you'll see more of it later but you can tell that it seems to have a bit missing on the, the front left corner <laughs> better quality of video of that one there but I'm going to keep my eye on that one so I do really like it you can see the twisted snout there you can see the provident nose a bit not sure if those two fall into Shore and Sankey or not but again Good size, good body shape, and good markings. This is ball three of the koi, and again, these are still between four and five inch. And there's a black one, the two silver, that's a blacky green one. That one is one from the mass burning from the pond. There's four or maybe five, without checking the records, I'm sure there's four or maybe five that I've put in. And that is the second most distinctive one that I can remember going in. Nice black and potentially white one there. Thank you. 
very nice that one. I'm not going to say they're show class, they're wonderful, fantastic or anything, but what they are is uh, alive, eating well and growing nicely. This one looks a bit strange and deformed, but on closer inspection, if you have a Look round its lips, it's got black lips and a black barbel, which with the shading makes it look round. Can you sit there? Yeah, there's quite a few nice ones in there. That one with the Shisui style uh, markings down its back. Not sure if it's got orange. No, there's no orange underneath it. Now, as a first, we're going to move to the inside fry vat. And these are the fry from the mass spawning in the pond, my main pond. So I don't know exactly who the parents are, but looking at the colours, they're very metallic. They're very pale, they're very silver, there's a few with a, very, a bit of pink on them. In the main pond I've not got many redfish anyway that are at the age where they're spawning. So I'm guessing it could be the blue shisui, it could be the asagi, it could be one of those colours. But we'll have a look at the fish, we'll check them out. Sizes are between three and five inch, big five inch. It might be one or two that's six inch, but again, you can see the pinkness, you can see the pale, you can see the, sh the, s the scaly ones, and I don't know how they're going to turn out and how they're going to look, but it's more about keeping them alive, growing them, and passing them on to somebody else.
Just looking randomly at the fish in the pond, regarding the mass spawning and looking at the markings of the ones that's in there, I think the predominant uh, culprit is the blue one, or the bluey grey one that's like a shisui and the asagi. There's a lot of them seem to have that skeletal feature down the uh, back. The blue shisui type one is that one there, just come to the picture now. But who really knows? Thanks for watching the video and uh, if you've got any comments on the fry or if you've got any ideas or any plans or there's any of your favourites just let me know in the comments below which one's your favourite or uh, how you think they're going to turn out and how they're going to uh, look. Again I'm going to emphasise they're from Cuttlebrook Koi I'm sure all the good ones have been taken out first or anything that looks well these are just Cuttlebrook Koi fry mass purchase to, uh, to gain some experience and to uh, to grow on in my own time so thanks a lot for watching if you haven't already subscribed please hit the subscribe button please check out some more videos and comment below if you need to because i'm also got a page on uh, facebook if you want to check out there what's well, got a few bits of clips that are not in these videos and a few comments and a few questions there's a bit of advice on there there's a bit of help and there's a bit of uh, technical data if you want to check it out that's a koi enthusiast on the facebook page Thanks a lot for watching the videos, thanks a lot for subscribing, happy ponding.